welcome back to Pop Dose Presents. Thank We're you. here today with Ari. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very, very good. The last time that we spoke, I think, was in the spring, right around the time that quarantine started, and that was for your EP, Idiot Girl. Yeah, that would have been like a little, well, that might have been like when quarantine started for you guys. We were already in quarantine for a while uh, here in Canada, but that would have been probably right before the EP release. Um, It's crazy to think that it was already that long ago. It's interesting because you go back and forth between Toronto and LA, right? Do you get do you get the impression that Canada's taking the pandemic more seriously? Okay. Without a doubt. Oh my gosh. Going to cuz um, I used to go back and forth relatively quite a bit, but obviously with the pandemic and the travel ban and all that stuff, I I wasn't going um during like the thick of quarantine, so I was there for the first time since January for October and going there after experiencing Canadian lockdown, like Toronto lockdown specifically, because Toronto was one of the harshest places in Canada was nuts. Like there's no mandatory quarantine. When you get there, you can do whatever you want. People have no personal space and like no one wears their masks. And it's just like, huh, it's actually kind of scary going from a place like here where a lot of the people are, are like, pretty paranoid about it like a lot of the people I know are also really paranoid about it like they'll be like no I don't want to hang out because I don't want to catch COVID whereas in LA everyone's like partying (laughs) I mean half of our country is still convinced that it's a hoax but glad that you're staying safe well the last time that we spoke in the spring uh about idiot girl I remember we were you know closing out and we talked about upcoming projects and you told me that you had a spooky themed Halloween type project coming out around Halloween. And I said, I'm very interested in that. And we got to talk about it after it comes out. It's come out, the EP, Kiss Me, Kill Me. Let's talk about it. What do you Let's talk about it. All right, well, let's start with the album art, kind of like spooky zombie drawing, kind of old school. I think the first single, you had sort of a classic, like scary movie, like a slasher vibe murderer. Yeah, old school Hollywood, like glam, kind of scary movie-esque thing. And then for Kiss Me, Kill Me, we wanted it. Well, we saw this girl, um, my manager found this girl's artwork um, on Instagram and we loved it so much that instead of being like, oh, we should do something like that. We were just like, why don't we just do that and get her to like draw something specifically for us. So we hit her up and she was amazing. Her her name on Instagram is tragicgirls.co. She is all this super cool. I'm wondering if I can like show any of it, but her, her art is like crazy cool. I don't know if you guys can like see all of that, but like her art design and like the way that she does things is, is really dope. And her theme primarily is spooky. So it was just like right up my alley. And we commissioned her to do something specific for kiss me, kill me. And we sent her all the songs and kind of asked her if there was anything that came to mind in terms of what we wanted the photo to be. We just kind of gave her a bit of like creative freedom in terms of what she envisioned when she heard my songs and that's what she came up with and we loved it but the uh so the girl on the cover um for the one that's illustrated for kiss me kill me the official ep that appears to be you correct yeah and then and then who is a gentleman with his face being ripped off was that modeled after anybody no just a gentleman it's just a we kind of wanted to keep the like dark hair dark theme going because like that's I guess the theme that I'm sporting right now so we kind of kept the like like old school like greaser kind of like dark hair comb leather jacket and it turned out really great and his face is being blown off by my kiss of death that's basically what it was supposed to be like the kiss of death kind of thing I'm getting that. that vibe for it I like there's a little like uh lip stain on the on the cheekbone and not just like oh like on my cheekbone like on the actual bone oh, of no. the cheek yeah but very cool i was playing through the songs earlier um super super catchy especially the uh the title track itself kiss me kill me what was sort of the inspiration for doing the project how is the sound like different if if at all from you know your last ep idiot girl and what was sort of going through your creative brain for this one definitely a different sound i'd say still on par but definitely a little different uh the the ep kind of came up as a joke suggestion i i wrote the song murderer and when i was finished writing the song with my amazing co-write rachel i like also kind of blurted the word it wasn't supposed to be what it was and then it ended up being kind of like 
I think I've said this before, but it was, it was about a specific person and it was like kind of my way of like getting all those feelings out. Like that song was really therapeutic. And after I was done writing it, I was thinking about the title and I was like, huh, murderer. I was like, I wonder if like, it's like, it'd be kind of cool if I could make that Halloween related somehow. And then I kind of like threw it out as a joke. I was like, what if we did like a Halloween themed thing? And then everyone loved the idea. And I was like, okay, good. So then we just, it kind of happened on accident. And I'm super glad we got to do it because then Kiss Me, Kill Me actually came last. We thought about, I know I really wanted to do, my manager suggested doing a cover of like an already famous Halloween song. And that's where we landed on, uh, I put a spell on you, which I'm still like jazzed about the fact that I got to do an official like rendition of that. Um, And then Kiss Me, Kill Me came last and I wrote it like specifically to be Halloween themed. I wasn't expecting to love as much as I did. And I think most people weren't expecting to love that one as much because it's definitely the most different. It's like a little more electro pop, which I haven't done, but it ended up being the favorite, which I'm, I'm happy about because that one I wrote completely by myself and the production just like ended up going in this direction that was different, but still somehow fit what I was trying to do. Very cool. How did you, how did you choose to snub Monster Mash as the cover? <laughs> Well, it was also what I was able to like, what I was able to do. It was between, I wanted to do Monster Mash. I didn't know if I would be able to do it justice. You know, that is one of my favorite, that's probably my favorite Halloween song. Uh, But it was between, I put a spell on you and I really wanted to do this Halloween, but I couldn't. Uh, But I put a spell on you has also been one of my favorites since I was really little. And I'm, I'm thankful to Sony for helping me get that. Great song. Your rendition of it sounds awesome. But I just think Monster Mash, that's what's popping in the clubs these days. Well, I guess nothing is popping in the clubs. I guess I can always do that next year. Yeah. Do you do a good, like, low, like, ooh, spooky, like, type voice? I wonder if I could. I'll have to try it out. We'll just use auto-tune. We'll just pitch correct it down, like, an octave. I mean, my voice can go pretty low, so it's not too out of the question, I don't think. You mentioned earlier the sort of, like, aesthetic themes that you're going through and how the album art and sort of the creative direction of this was tied into that with dark hair and everything. I'm also noticing, uh, looking around the room there, you also have some witchy type artwork hung up. I do. This is my favorite um, print artist. Her name's Valfrey. And these two are like witchy and these two are just like kind of normal, really nice paintings. But this one's like a little witch. These are two vampires moon bathing. We got a little girl in the salon and a girl posing with her flowers. She's amazing. And I've been in love with her art forever. And uh, my roommate got me these for my birthday last year. And I've been like, I always told myself the minute I get my own place, finally, I need to have her shit in my room because it's so dope. And, uh, yeah, I guess I kind of always have some. I still have like, I don't know if you can see it. There's like a dead tree thing here. There's I do. Like, I see that. And before at a different angle, it looks like you have a Scooby-Doo doll, which is Halloween-ish. He's a Valentine's one though. I do. And then I also have some anime stuff in here. I've got my wand um, and I've got my, here, wait, my. See, that could be the album cover right there. <laughs> I have these up all year round. What's I put up? my Halloween decorations, I don't take them down. We still have Halloween decorations like out in our living room. Well, I think that the the Valentine Scooby is probably a very good um, sort of amalgamation of of the album theme because there's like a romance thing going on with with the album. They're like these sort of love or anti-love songs. So a Scooby-Doo mixed with Valentine's Day, that's like, that that perfectly captures it. He's a Valentine Scooby superhero. What happens when you know, you come up with the theme of your next project. Are you going to have to swap out all of your belongings in your room? My themes are based on me. So it's always like a different part of me, something to do with me already. I always like to write from everything I've put out so far has been pretty personal, except Kiss Me, Kill Me. Kiss Me, Kill Me is kind of just like fun. It can kind of apply to anything. I wasn't like writing about someone or something in specific. It was just like you know, but to everything I put out thus far, pretty much except that has been like really personal to me and my story and anything I put out, I like to relate it to me in some way, shape or form so that it's not just me writing about something that I don't actually agree with or know or like have experience. So there'll always be parts of me in this room that probably remind people of my of my work. <laughs>
Well, what about what about the song "Murder"? Is that about somebody specific? Have you have you dated a murderer, or is it more of a confession? <laughs> no, your- no, that was me being harsh. It's uh, that song. That's when I was saying that I wrote about someone in specific, and it was kind of my way of letting go. It was murder is more just about the death of love in general. And like, you know, I went through a bad breakup and it was kind of me getting all my emotions out about that. It's just pretty much about all those like ugly, nasty emotions that you feel when like you feel your heartbreak, you know, they're not necessarily rational, but you feel them either way. And I kind of just wanted to write about that because I, I feel like so many people kind of shy away from those, like, cause they are nasty. They're nasty emotions, whether it's towards yourself or towards the other person. And like, I'm not going to lie. I definitely felt those for a period of time. And I kind of just wanted to share that with people. Well, for anybody just tuning in, I'm here with Ari talking about the death of love (laughs) and uh, other, other cursed topics coming to the end of 2020. What is on the horizon for you musically, personally, personally, quarantine, lockdown, um all right so you're in lockdown does that mean writing for you You pretty much right now it's just sessions like i did a session yesterday i did a session two days before that i've got a session tomorrow um i mean murderer i wrote that on a zoom session i wrote kiss me kill me on a zoom session as well so it's like very possible it's definitely easier in person just to like get things going but it's it's we figured out a way um in terms of music Right now, just in the process of figuring out exactly how I want to release things, exactly what I like want to release when. Um, I've got a couple songs that I really like. I recently wrote a song about my favorite anime character. It was kind of like a love letter to him. <laughs> okay, well, we got to know who that is now. Ashi, if you watch Naruto. Absolutely. Yeah, I have like a shrine of him in my room right now, face like, like he's behind you. I'll see if I can grab... This I waited three hours in an anime warehouse to get this guy. That is actually epic. And these are good fun facts for people to learn about you. And I want to get his Anbu tattoo, like the the one here, really bad. Um, and I've got a little poster of him behind you. And then there's like a light over there that you can't see, but it's Kakashi. <laughs> um, so I wrote a like love letter to him. That's one of the songs. I wasn't expecting it to... I was like worried whether or not I would like it because I, I wanted it to like come out really cool and it actually did. It came out like kind of dreamy, um, but it came from this concept that I wrote down um, and the tagline was, um, sometimes I cry because the things I love aren't real. So it was like, I get really wrapped up in like fantasy worlds and I love like when I watch shows, I feel like that's why I love anime so much as well because I feel like I'm kind of escaping into their world for the time I'm watching it. And I remember I used to be so obsessed with so many different like realms um, and like fictional places and characters. And I, I sat there and wondered why. And I was like, I think like sometimes I get really sad because I like wish I could be a part of that and I can't. So that's what the song came out of. And it turned into like, like a love letter to like my favorite anime character. Of, like, I wish I could be there and like you were real, but you're not. So that's a cool one. I'm just kind of focusing on, I really want to release a lot of singles this year and I'd love to do some features. I think that, yeah, what you're saying about getting caught up in sort of these like imaginary worlds of different media that you really like. And then it's kind of disappointing that it doesn't actually exist. Mm-hmm. I find that very relatable. I think it's very relatable content, at least for somebody else like myself that grew up with like certain games or like anime franchises that I was really into. And I think that line, which I guess is a lyric from a song, I saw that you had tweeted that out. I just thought you were you were going through something. But now I know now I know it's a lyric. Well, I mean when I when I first wrote that down. So a lot of the times what I do and what I found works for me process wise now is I like to write either little phrases like that, or if something inspirational comes to me, I usually don't write it down in lyric form. I'll write it down in like a little poem. Um, and then I'll see if I can make it into something. So I originally wrote that like after watching the show and like I was having a rough night and I started crying and I was like, Oh, I just wish I could like escape into this world that I love so much and I can and like, what would things be like? And I kind of just fell into this like, mode of wishing that I could visit all these places that like make me feel so much joy like I felt that way about Harry Potter I mean I still do and like there's so many times where I'd like go to bed after watching and be like I wish I could visit I wish I could go there 
And like, I kind of just went with that on, um, of this one writing session that I had in LA and I had a writing session the other day, um, where there was this poem that I wrote where I sat on my balcony in LA and just observed everything I could possibly observe. Like the people that walked by the way, the cars drove by the signs I could see what the stars were like. And I kind of wrote it into poem form and it was really cool. Cause I, we got to like take that and we put like huge full sentences of the poem that I wrote and put it into a song. And I wrote that song the other day, which was really cool. I'm excited about that one. So there's That's like so lots, cool. of, lots of like new stuff potentially on the horizon. It's just figuring out the exact plan for it. You know what's cool about the love song um, for your favorite anime character is that, especially at a time now where it's kind of hard for artists to film music videos in person, maybe you could have somebody animate the music video in the style of the show. That'd be just pretty. saying. I would love to be turned into a Naruto character. Have you not yet? Because I guarantee there's people who will see this who like know how to do that sort of thing. If you are watching this and you know how to animate me into an anime character or specifically a Naruto style anime character, please do it and please send it to me because I would be forever grateful. I'm learning a bunch of new stuff every every single time we talk. Last time I learned about the origin of the the Idiot Girl EP title, which was a lot of fun. And we talked a bit about the Halloween de desire to do a project for that, which I did not expect at all for you to tell me that that was going to be your upcoming thing. Yep. And now I'm learning that that uh, you're an anime junkie and, and Harry Potter fan and stuff. I didn't expect that I would like spooky things. I should have, I suppose. I just, you know, I, I'm a clean slate and I go in and then I'm learning all sorts of cool things. Do I not but... seem like like spooky things? I don't know. You seem very spooky. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want you to be insulted by telling you that you're not spooky. You're very spooky. One of the spookiest. One of the spookiest. That's, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Tell me I'm spooky. <laughs> We're going to do top 10 spooky artists of the year on Poptus, and I'll make sure you're at least within the top three. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Well, um, Thank you for, for making time for us again. I will let you go. It's much later where you are than for me. Um, but yeah, looking, looking forward to um, hearing your next projects and everything. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me again. I really appreciate it. I had fun as well. And I look forward to talking to you guys in the new year when I've got some new shiz coming out. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so for everybody here at Poptus, this has been Poptus Presents with Ari. Uh, please follow her online. I think you're Ari Hicks or I am Ari Hicks, basically Ari. everywhere. And obviously we are at Poptus. Um, yeah, get at us. Hit like, subscribe, all those things. Follow her on her new anime viewing channel on Twitch where she's just watching her favorite anime and fans are joining and watching with her. It's going to happen. Have a great night. Bye. Right.